Okay, so the next one is gonna be a little controversial because it's like everybody's favorite book in the entire world. Um, <laughs> please don't hate me. I'm sorry that I found your favorite book disappointing. I'm, I'm sorry. Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my most disappointing reads of 2021. That does not necessarily mean that they are bad books, so please don't take it that way. They just underwhelmed me or wasn't what I was expecting from them. These are in no particular order. I just have a list of books that I read this year that I didn't enjoy as much as I thought I was going to. I think only like two or three came out in 2021 because I am a cheapskate and I refuse to pay for books full price. I always wait until they're in the thrift store which usually means I read new releases like six years later because they're never in the thrift store or I get sent them by publishers and that is the only time I actually read new releases. So the majority of these are back books so without further ado let us get started. The first book I have is Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan. This one was so ridiculously hyped up that I had such high expectations for it and it just fell so short of those expectations. Also, the author apparently sucks. She did some real shady stuff on Twitter. I read this book and unhauled it like three days before all of that went down so I hated the romance in this book. It made absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. It took place between a rogue blood mage named Malachi and the main character Nadia, but Malachi was just such a, a terrible individual. He kept revealing all these terrible things to Nadia and she just kept running back to him being like, it's okay, you're a monster and I love you. And I was just like, but, but why? Like I just... <laughs> Toxic, unhealthy, we don't like for 2021. Next up, I have The Project by Courtney Summers. I was so excited for this book, so stinking excited because it was like a cult book and I personally am a huge fan of cult books. I find them so interesting, but this sucked. <laughs> like it was not good. I thought it was going to be so good because I had read Sadie by this author the previous year and I freaking loved that book. I gave that one a 5 out of 5 stars. This one I gave a 3 out of 5 stars. I just didn't care. The entire time I was reading the story, it felt like there was going to be this huge reveal and something really like amazing was going to happen and then it just never came and then the book was over and I was just bored for the entire thing. So it was just so frustrating and upsetting because like I said, I had such high hopes for this. Next up is a sequel to one of my favorite books of the year, which is extremely disappointing, hence why it's on this list. It is All the Tides of Fate by Adeline Grace. This is a sequel to All the Stars of the Teeth, and I, like I said, absolutely freaking loved that book, so I had such high expectations for this one, and it just fell completely short. It was just very underwhelming when I was reading it. I think I loved the first book so much, and it was so eventful that this one took place mostly at sea, and it just wasn't as eventful or action-packed as the first one was for me. I honestly think that this could have been left as a standalone and it would have been a lot better in my opinion. Just because the first book was just so good and then this one was just so boring and I hated that. I mean like I still gave it a 3.5 out of 5 so it's not like I gave it a really negative rating. I just I was expecting so much from these characters and I didn't get them. Okay, so the next one is going to be a little controversial because it's like everybody's favorite book in the entire world. Um, <laughs> it's Song of Achilles uh, by Madeline Miller. I was so disappointed in this. I honestly think it's because I know the story of the Iliad and Achilles and all of that so well that I just felt like I was reading that again, which like I know I wasn't. I, I get it. Like I did enjoy it, don't get me wrong. I do think it is a really great book, but I think I was just expecting more from it. But I think I was just expecting to be blown away and when I wasn't, that was very disappointing to me. I just found this book to be so predictable, which is kind of dumb for me to say of a like historical story. Like obviously it's gonna be predictable and I know the story very well, so I know what's gonna happen, but I don't know. I was just so underwhelmed by it and I was expecting to give it a five out of five stars because literally everybody on booktube does. The writing is beautiful, I will give it that, but it was just so slow and I was just sitting there waiting for something to happen and it just never did, so. Please don't hate me. I'm sorry that I found your favorite book disappointing. I'm, I'm sorry. 
Next up, I have What's Not to Love by Emily something in Austin something. I honestly cannot remember their names. I also think that they're pretty long names, so just these two people on the screen. These two people. Um, this was an enemies to lovers academic romance. I am usually a sucker for enemies to lovers. It's like my favorite trope, but these two drove me insane. It's about these two teenagers. They are about to turn 18, so they should be a little bit more mature than what they are, so that also drove me crazy. They are battling to become a valedictorian for their school, and the principal says that in order to get a recommendation to Harvard, they have to help plan a reunion, and they battle it out, basically, but they are just the most immature, annoying humans on this planet. Alice in the main girl character is also just terrible to her family. Like, she is so mean for absolutely no reason and it just drove me crazy because they were trying to be so supportive of her and like giving her options on how to like de-stress basically and she was just like fuck you guys like you guys don't know anything. Just the amount of times that I had to like put this book down and just breathe and say to myself like these characters aren't real they can't hurt you, was ridiculous. So I just, I was not a fan of this. I don't think it was a bad book and I do think that the explorations of like different life paths that you can take was really well done because it showed a lot of different options to people, but just these main characters, man, I, I could not. Next up, I have Blade of Secrets by Trisha Levenseller, and this is probably my most disappointing of the entire year because Shadow Between Us was my favorite book of 2020, so I went into this thinking that I was going to freaking love this story. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars, so it's not like it was a bad book. It was fun while it lasted, but it wasn't The Shadows Between Us, and I think that that honestly was my problem with it. This follows Zyva, who is a magical blacksmith who suffers from social anxiety. She's commissioned by a warlord to make a weapon for them that will make them unstoppable in battle, and so she creates this weapon, but it becomes, like, deadly. So she goes on the run with a mercenary and herself and her sister, and they're trying to, like, escape this warlord, and so, like, the concept is really cool. The book was very slow in the beginning, and I think I had expected it to jump right off the start into action, just because that's how the Shadows Between Us was. So really, this is just me comparing it to The Shadows Between Us. So like, read this book. It is a good book. I also just didn't vibe well with Zyva as a main character. Just something about her didn't sit right with me. I also found the ending to be very abrupt. I went into it not knowing that there was going to be a sequel, so it just like ended and I was flipping the pages being like, okay, there's gotta be more. So I am intrigued to see where the second book goes and I probably will read it if I can find a copy of it, but I was just disappointed because I had such high expectations for this. Next up, I have Witches Steeped in Gold by Shannon Smart, and I was just thoroughly confused throughout this whole book. It was just a much more dense and complicated fantasy than I thought it was going into it. The concept was really cool, though. It basically follows two witches who are sworn enemies that need to make an alliance in order to overthrow the current ruler. So, like, it sounds like it's gonna be really, really cool, but I was just so confused. I was 215 pages into this book and I realized I had no idea what the heck was going on. I didn't understand the magic systems, I didn't understand the world building, I didn't understand literally anything about it, so it was so disappointing because this was one of my most anticipated reads of the entire year. The book was also just very, very slow. It did not keep my attention until the last few chapters of the book, and it is a pretty lengthy book, so if there's no action until the last couple of chapters, like, I'm not gonna like it. I am thinking about reading rereading this before the second book comes out so that maybe it was just like my brain power at that moment couldn't handle it and maybe I need to focus a little bit more but yeah it was just really disappointing and I was really upset about it. Next up I have That Weekend by Kara Thomas and I freaking loved this book up until the ending. The ending! What was that ending? This book follows Claire and her two friends who are supposed to spend the weekend after prom at a lake house in the mountains. But then the next day, Claire wakes up bloody and alone on a mountain trail, and she has no memory of what happened. So everybody is turning to her, trying to find information about her two friends and where they might be, and Claire can't provide those answers, so as the time progresses, she starts to worry that something bad must have happened to them, and it's like the story of that. So like, concept, cool, awesome, thought it was gonna be great. I was going to rate this a 4.5, and then the ending happened, and I was like, nope, no. No, 
if you've read this book, you know what I'm talking about. Like, the ending is so bad. I also just didn't like Claire as a main character. I found her to be very annoying, and, like, I get why she became so obsessive about finding out what happened to her friends, but it got to the point where it was, like, too much. But like I said, this would not have made it onto that list if it wasn't for that freaking ending. Have. And then the final book that I have actually still have my physical copy of is Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. I he he, was expecting so much from this book because everybody really enjoyed it when it first came out. So I was expecting to really enjoy it. And I think, I think, it's because everybody was talking about how amazing the OCD and anxiety rep is. As somebody who doesn't actually suffer from those two mental illnesses, I couldn't really connect the way that other people say that they've connected with this character. I also was not a fan of Daisy as a, the main character's best friend. I will admit I liked her at the beginning. I thought she was really funny. But as the story progressed, uh, their friendship just became so toxic and just not, not good. So I just wanted to keep them apart from each other the entire time. I just don't think it was healthy for Azza and her mental health at that time. So yeah, just could not relate to the characters and toxic friendship. It just it was not for me. All right, everybody, so those were my most disappointing books of 2021. This list makes me very sad because a lot of them I was anticipating loving so much and that just wasn't the case, so that sucked. Let me know down below a couple of your disappointing reads and let me know down below if you've read any of my disappointing reads and what you thought of them and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!